This week on Sportsman TV, 50 Shades of Sackalay. He's as excited about the last one as he was 10,000 ago. <laughs> you know what? I don't know if I want to tell you where we are. Jerry? Why is that? Well, it's, <laughs> it's getting enough pressure as it is. We don't, want, we don't want it to get too much fishing pressure. I'll tell you this, we're in the part of the Atchafalaya Basin. Is that good enough? We're in Henderson Swamp, northern part of the Atchafalaya, Sacolay Spawn. <laughs> now, to me personally, this is the, my favorite way to fish for them. When they get on cover in the spring, jig pole, you know, they're on cypress trees. This doesn't get any better than this. You, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Don't show that camera down. <laughs> <laughs> this is bait. You know, uh, at one time, this area to me was the finest place to bass fish in, uh, actually, as far as I'm concerned, in Louisiana. And you can just see how big and vast it is. And it's just a good sign. We had no storms, Katrina, Rita, and it just really seemed like it really hurt the area. We had a huge fish kill. And uh, you know, now you can tell by the size of the uh, by the size of the sackle that the you know the fishing has come back in Henderson Swamp. So you might have wore them out here. <laughs> That's a good one there. That's a good one there. Ooh, look at the squirrel in it. That's a big one there, bud. You got him? I mean, double strippers. <laughs> Swarming on these trees. Oh my God, this is fun. I love it. Over here at Bowie Outfitters, hunting and fishing is our passion. We can help you pick all the right gear for your next fishing trip. We spend time in the woods too, so we know what products to recommend when hunting season comes around. We understand the outdoors and what it takes to have success on your hunting and fishing adventures. So come on down to Bowie Outfitters and let us help get you going. Bowie Outfitters, everything outdoors. For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice.
Don't just be a sportsman, look like one too. Men, women, kids, everyone wants to look like a good sport. And now you can find it all in one place without leaving the house. Our popular sportsman brand apparel and accessories are just a click away at forsportsman.com. T-shirts, caps, polarized sunglasses, jewelry, tumblers, and more are available in a variety of sizes and colors. It's easy to show the world that you are a sportsman. Visit forsportsman.com today and get that perfect sportsman item for yourself or as a gift for that sportsman in your life. Fishing, it's where good stories come from. It's about good times and family and friends. It's about taking a couple home for dinner tonight and saving a few for tomorrow. It's all about that and so much more. To CCA, fishing is about enjoying today and making sure tomorrow is even better. To us, fishing comes with a responsibility for the resources we enjoy so much. If fishing means all that to you, then you belong with CCA. Yesterday, I didn't really change spot. I just kept moving around the same area, and I just kept picking up fish. Yesterday, it was really, really biting. Uh, now, on a day like today, it looked like we're having to move around a little bit. Uh, I would say a day like today, we probably could have fished three or four spots, and uh, maybe we would have picked up more fish. I was, I was hoping that we could have stayed in that one area, but it didn't look like it was working that way. You got one? Worked it enough to where, where you picked one out of there. Yeah, because usually what they'll do, they'll have a good second bite. When you get that first bite in the morning, then usually they'll have a good second bite after that, you know, so. Usually I'll hang around and I'll, I'll fish them. Depends on how many I have, you know, if I have a good mess, I'll give it up, you know, but uh, you can catch again. I mean, they, they will bite again. You know, that's funny. We fished a bunch of trees, you know, some of them we caught like, you know, even as many as three off of, but those two trees there, we end up catching how many? Twelve. Now, Mr. Murphy, you'll go back to those trees, won't you? Like a place, when you find a place like that. Yeah, definitely. When you had a bite like that, you definitely go back to that. Uh, do you find that the same trees, if the conditions get right each year, you catch them off? Each the year. Month? Right, each year. They go back to the same trees. I don't know why. I guess they must leave some kind of scent behind or something. I don't know. Maybe the saw is right or whatever. Uh, but they, they'll go back to the same trees. Now, this is another good flat here through the years. It's been real productive. You know, we he been fishing this morning before we got there, and they were already biting. And when we got there, they were biting. And uh, you know, it seemed like they just quit. You know, it got to be where we only had like a bite or two in a a long period of time, and then we made a little move. And I mean, well, he caught three, I think, off the first tree that we fished when we got into this area, and uh, they were smaller ones. And then we pulled over to the next trees, and of course, they were all, you know, they were all they were mixed, big ones, medium sized ones. There really wasn't any small ones, but. You know, I guess what I'm saying with that is you give it a certain amount of time, you either got to change and figure out what they've changed or, you know, time to move. And look at the, uh, look at the difference in the color. Like how the, uh, the male is so dark and how light the, the female is. Them kind, Jared, you don't want them to get away. Look, there's another one. Uh, you know, typically our saltwater fishing, you know, honestly, even April, it's probably, it just gets better and better. Not that you can't, you know, the diehards are not catching them, you know, but with these weather systems, it blows the water in, it blows it out, you know, uh, the, uh, the freshwater fishing to me is better early than the saltwater fishing typically because of the weather. Bass fishing, the sackle fishing, the hog hunting. I mean, there's just a lot of things you can do. I mean, you know, rabbit season just went out a week ago. 
I really, you know, to me personally, I like the saltwater fishing better once it heats up. Now, there are situations, you know, when they, they wad up in dead ends and places, you know, where the trout and the red fishing is good, but I, I think in the spring, the freshwater fishing seems to be a little more consistent. I, I'm not a diehard cyclay fisherman, so by far, this is the best time of the year for me to go because this is when they're the easiest to catch. You know, as it gets later in the year, they're like a lot of other species. It, it takes somebody who stays on them every day to catch them, you know, uh, like Mr. Murphy. You know, if you're someone who, you know, does most of their fishing for trout and redfish, inshore fishing, uh, it's so easy, you know, to make the switch over to this because you can basically use most of the same equipment. The only thing you need to invest in is a good jig pole, a good sackle pole, uh, and a handful of sackle jigs in different, you know, an assortment of different colors. And other than that, that's all you need. Uh, you can get into sackle fishing a lot cheaper, for say, because of the equipment over, uh, you know, than most other fishing because you, you know you can get by with a what, Mr. Murphy? How much one of the jig poles cost? Uh, you can get some for about forty bucks a good pole. Good pole, forty dollars, twenty dollars worth of crappie jigs. You in? Uh, all the Atchafalaya Basin, you know, is full of sackle. Uh, you know, they catch sackle in the marsh. Uh, if you want to go to one of the bigger reservoirs, you know, we've done that in the past. Uh, you can hire a guide. There are just tons of guides on, uh, you know, on Toledo Bend. We went with Stephen Johnson. I mean, and just, you know, there's the sackle fishing is really, really good in our part of the country. You can catch them shallow. You can catch them deep. I mean, you know, they catch them there 35 or 40 foot deep. Uh, and like we're catching them here, you know, 18 to 2 foot deep, you know, 18 inches to two foot deep. So uh, a lot of opportunities. You know, uh, another good thing is to go on the Sportsman. You know, go on louisianasportsman.com and see the areas that are the most productive. You know, typically people are putting out fishing reports all the time, uh, guides are what area of the country. Our area from 10 south is always turns on first. Um, it's the part of the country that warms up first. It's, you know, it's where the bass spawn first, it's where the cyclo spawn first. Uh, you can just about draw a line on Interstate 10. Everything south of there is going to happen, you know, typically first because of our weather. Buoy Outfitters is your one-stop shop for all types of outdoor cooking. Tailgating? We've got Bayou Classic Barbecue Pits and King Cooker Jambalaya Pots. If frying's your favorite, check out R&D Works Cajun Fryers and Cajun Injector Products to keep meat moist and flavorful. Black iron skillets are key in a southern kitchen, and Buoy carries a big selection of lodge cast iron, plus Bayou Classic Pots for your next crawfish boil. Come to Buoy Outfitters and let us get you cooking. Buoy Outfitters, everything outdoors. Man, what a year. What a year. Life changing. All the way from my home in Louisiana to the Great Lakes up north in Michigan. I did it. You know, I didn't do it by myself. It takes a team, man. It's all about the team. Nobody gets there alone. Nope. Man, thank you, Strikey. LouisianaSportsman.com is the South's premier hunting and fishing website. Planning a hunting or fishing trip? Visit LouisianaSportsman.com and get up-to-the-date information on weather, tides, or solar data. Our breaking news and continually updating form will keep you up-to-date. Or visit our report section and ask the locals what's been biting and where. Need to sell or buy an outdoor item? LouisianaSportsman.com's free classifieds are the quickest way for you to reach the outdoor market. LouisianaSportsman.com, the quick way to get the most of the outdoors. Hi, I'm Greg Hackney, 2014 Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. You know, fishing both tournament trails, both BASS and FLW, is really hard on your equipment. And one thing that I depend on to do all my heavy lifting with is my TNH Marine Atlas Jack Plate. Atlas Jack Plates come pre-drilled for shallow water anchor attachment. They also come in six different offsets, one that fits everyone's needs. You know, for me, the biggest thing about Atlas Jack Plates, they make it a lot easier for me to make a living. TNH Marine has been the choice of champions since 19. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a pretty good start, isn't it? That's the way we like to start on Sportsman TV. Beautiful fish. Big old female in it. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> well, I've caught them in murky water. Uh, I've caught them real good in murky water. I've caught them real good in steam water. I've caught them real good in clear water. Uh, it's like a, most of the time what I look for is, is there's a lot of activity on the water, a lot of fish activity. If there's a lot of fish in the area, that means that, that you know, more than likely there's going to be fish here. Such a, it's such a cool place. It's, it's, it's got a bunch of natural bayous through it that are deep channels. And then it's got all these big flats with vegetation and cypress stumps and cypress trees. It's just, uh, to me, this is the prettiest place to fish in the whole basin because of the way it looks. Also, I grew up in an area that looks just like this, like the place that I learned to fish in is just is a big cypress flat like this. And, uh, you know, you fish what looks good. That's what the fish get on. I mean, I can tell you, Henry, I don't know how big it is. How many acres do you, is, I mean, it's got, even just, just this place alone has to be, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40,000 acres. I wouldn't have any way to, to tell how big it is. It's huge. I mean, it's a huge place. Female. Yep. You need your. That's the one you missed, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> it was in the same area where you missed them. Yeah, it does seem like they don't, they're not as close to the tree as the... Uh, females are. They, they never, they, once in a while you find them close to the tree, but for the most part, they'll be away from the tree. And look at the color difference, like how white she is and, those, uh, and how black those males are. Like she's already spooned. I don't, her belly's not not wide at all. I think she's already spooned her. Well, hopefully it's good for another month or so. I'm thinking it's gonna be good for another month. Last year it was good for two months. Like it was good all the way to May, like April. April. We started in March, like Mar right around March 1st in here. And I think that's because we had all that cold weather last year, you know, kind of put them. Right, it, put, it set them back. And then it, I guess they all had to spawn pretty much at the same time, you know. And it, and it was all, it all, it was all in the flats. And the water was higher last year than now. So that helped. The water stayed in the flats. We was losing our water here recently and then it, it stopped and it went back up a little bit. So we, got, we gained a little bit of water. And that's a good thing. Uh, you know, I know this water fluctuates in feet, what it is. You know. uh, do you still catch them when it's high? You know, when it gets really high, you know, all this, you know, it'd be eight foot of water out here. Yeah, I used to catch them. I used to catch them around the cypress trees when, with uh, about eight foot of water, eight, ten foot of water around these trees. I'd catch them way back in the day. You know, and I guess it was a different pattern for the fishing. You know, the fishing, it wasn't spawn fish you were catching. It was, it was after the spawn, basically, is what you were catching. They would hold on them trees. Oh, that's one of your buddies again. Trash fish. Trash fish. You want him? Yeah, we probably put him in the box. Keep him from messing up his good cycle. That's how I want to hold him. Now that's a male, isn't it? That's a male. Back to that. <laughs> you gotta get fired up about that sack like this. I get it good. And hadn't we already fished that tree, yeah, uh, we fished that tree, we'd already fished it once. Right. We see the bite's probably going to get real aggressive here because I noticed uh, they, they said that the feeding period was uh, 945 to 145. So it, it should start getting real aggressive. River here can ruin the fishing. I mean, you know what I'm saying. This thing can jump. 
you know, it, it's at a point right now that any time it, it may jump two or three feet just, you know, in a 24 hour period. And when that happens, you know, like you see all these fishermen out here and they catching them, when that happens, this is fixed to be done. You know, so you really got to pay attention, you know, to the water level. You know, typically in the summertime, I don't pay much attention to it because we don't get a lot of, you know, then it's pretty stable, but this is spring of the year. And, uh, and I probably watch the Mississippi even before I start looking at the, uh, you know, looking at the Atchafalaya level just because when the Mississippi starts coming, you can get ready. They're gonna let some of that water through the Atchafalaya River. So that's gonna, you know, have effect on all the basin. And, it, and it's funny, the water level right now in here is down because they have the, uh, they have the locks closed, but the Atchafalaya is actually on a big rise, you know, right now, which I know all the crawfishermen are glad to, you know, glad to see that because they haven't had any water, they can't crawfish right now. Over here at Bowie Outfitters, hunting and fishing is our passion. We can help you pick all the right gear for your next fishing trip. We spend time in the woods too, so we know what products to recommend when hunting season comes around. We understand the outdoors and what it takes to have success on your hunting and fishing adventures. So come on down to Bowie Outfitters and let us help get you going. Bowie Outfitters, everything outdoors. Louisiana Sportsman Magazine. For over 31 years, your source for fishing and hunting information. Each month you will find stories by local experts in everything from bass to redfish to ducks, deer to trout and turkey. We've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors. You'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking, the latest lures, GPS locations, shooting, kayaks, and much more. Have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. Man, what a year. What a year. Life changing. All the way from my home in Louisiana to the Great Lakes up north in Michigan. I did it. You know, I didn't do it by myself. It takes a team, man. It's all about the team. Nobody gets there alone. Nope. Man, thank you, Striking. For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice. Ooh, look at that. Ain't that thing pretty? How about that? Beautiful, beautiful. Now, most of the time, the male is the darkest one, isn't he? Like, their color is a lot darker than the, uh... Than the female. The female's got that white belly. You know, basically, we're circling it. It's funny, like, the last tree before this one, we caught them around the first pass and went around it again and caught a couple more. You know, we, I think we caught three off the, the last tree and uh, I'm basically just dragging his little jigs around these, uh, around these trees. They uh, undoubtedly, th these trees have root wads, you know, around the bases of them. 
and off the sides of the trees, and those fish are spawning on those uh, root wads. Look, I mean, she was actually spawning when I caught her. Yeah, they're just coming out of her. See, that's egg right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all over you. I mean, this is kind of the sexual experience we got going on here in Mr. Murphy's boat. <laughs> we got all kinds of good stuff sprayed everywhere. <laughs> So in other words, they're prolific spawning a little bit. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're a little more prolific than a bass. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons that, like in a, on a small body of water, like a pond or whatever, they recommend not putting sacolay in it because they'll overpopulate so quick. You know, it's the reason our bass limit in the basin now is, uh, is seven. Well, you know, our sacolay limit's a lot more than that just because they, they do a lot, you know, they're just a lot more prolific spawner. The main thing about uh, pretty much all freshwater fish, like especially panfish, uh, sacolay bass, they all look for something hard to spawn on. Either if they spawn on the bottom, it has to be a really hard bottom, or like these are spawning on these trees because this bottom around here is soft. So they're not actually spawning on the ground, but you know, sacolay do spawn on the ground too. But the main thing is they have to have something hard. And the reason for that, if it's a soft bottom, they can't keep the silt fan clean. These eggs can't get dirt on them or silt. Uh, and in places like this, because, you know, there's so much vegetation and all that has died over the years in this swamp that the, most of the bottom here is not hard. You'd have to have, like, really hard running water to keep the, you know, the silt washed off of it. So that's the reason, you know, they're spawning on the trees and, and not just out here on the ground. In the human world, you know, you find most of the time it's the female that does the child rearing. Well, in the fishing world, it's not that way. Uh, I hate to say it, but she's a one night stand. She blows in and blows out, and he stays there, guards the eggs. Uh, like on a bass, they actually stay with the young till they're, you know, pretty much big enough to defend themselves. There, that's one of the reasons they're biting. They're biting out of aggression. They're not. They're not actually feeding now. You know, they just don't want anything little. You know, they think anything swimming around, whether it's a little crawfish, a minnow, a bluegill, whatever, is trying to eat those eggs, and it is. Look at there's another one. And see that kind of case in point, like we fished all the way around that tree before Mr. Murphy caught that. It was almost like you kind of, when they're not real, real super aggressive, you got to aggravate them into uh, biting. Bass are the same, uh, the same way. They're getting it on and we got it done. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.